So we, we all know the lobster telephone, it's one of the most iconic surrealist works, but it's usually presented as an art object. What we wanted to do here was to show that this was actually an interior design commission. And there are some works in this show, this, this lamp is one of them, that seem to have really found their moment this century. So it was designed by Dali in the 30s, mm -hmm. but at the time uh, thought to be too avant-garde for the market. So it was never produced uh, until this century. Well, this is a fascinating story and it chimes with what I was saying earlier about some of these surrealist works having their moment in this century. Mm -hmm. So Dali worked with um, Walt Disney and an animator at Walt Disney called John Hench to storyboard this Destino sequence which was originally uh, intended as part of a Fantasia film, you'll know the uh -huh. Fantasia films. Uh -huh. But um, in the 40s it lost funding and the whole thing was dropped and shelved. In uh, this century they unearthed the storyboards. Now we move into sections of the exhibition that are structured more by ideas. So this um, part looks at how surrealism's challenge to that modernist mantra of form follows function played out later in, in postmodernist mm -hmm. movements. Well, this section is really about the body. Um, as an absolutely central theme of surrealist art and design. So fashion is in that context uh, because, of course, it changes and presents the body in a different way and often surrealist fashion um, draws out elements of the body that weren't previously valued or seen. Surrealism was always concerned with the mind, but this room focuses particularly on how changing ways of thinking and changing the creative process can result in different ways of making and different types of, of objects. So this is a, an NFT image, and you may have seen uh, similar looking images on the, on the internet. Surrealism began as a literary movement but quite quickly started to find expression in art. A fascination with making objects which quickly became uh, a design uh, movement as well. So it started shaping the designed world first through interior design. There have been moments in the last hundred years where surrealism's uh, fascination with the emotional impact of design and how design can change our minds as well as uh, be a functional uh, aspect of our lives. Um, when that has really come to the fore and been at the, at the front of design innovation, uh, everywhere I look at the moment it seems that surrealist ideas and aesthetics are chiming with us. And I think it's no accident that these moments coincide with periods of economic and, and political instability because surrealism, surrealism was founded on um, a creative embrace of chaos, if you like. It, it accepts uncertainty, the inexplicable, and I think 
we need it now. We need artists and designers who respond to the messiness of these times. So you may come expecting to see Dali, Magritte, Merritt Oppenheim. You may not expect to see Alicia Quader or Lee Bull or contemporary designers like Nyla Alzheim or Jonathan Trait. Um, I hope that what we've, what we've tried to do is create the sort of ultimate party <laughs> of artists and designers in conversation with each other in this space. And I, I just hope that visitors will come and feel inspired by what they see and perhaps go away to create the surrealist works of the future. <laughs>